Did any of you have training? I had no training. I had to teach yeah, myself every single piece of kit. I was in the BBC, and the BBC was always mm. good about training. That yeah. was one of the dis very distinct advantages. So I was had probably about two to three weeks training on on the 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 UMATIC, the PSC system, if I may mm. dare call it that. And then again, well, when it came to the nonlinear later, I was actually put into position to actually say, right, we're going to buy our, we bought our first Avid, mm. and I want you to learn it and then you start training people. So I actually became a trainer in the BBC until our own training department suddenly said, hang on a minute, what's going on there? We're the trainers. But, but so I did do some training and we did train people. We would take them, uh, you know, you'd have a week, a week, I would have two people for a week and train mm. them. And it was, it was interesting, so it, sadly, probably people of my generation had more problems because you know it's a keyboard and that was certainly an issue um, whereas the assistants the younger ones yeah, that's, that's, oh, yeah, oh, this is quite fun but no we were so in the, and then of course you you'd probably be given time also to play you we, we we'd have some test edit rushes that you that with, with scripts and say no now you've had some training would you like you, know, you can go and spend a week or a few days Having a, having a go and actually you know, get used to it. Mm. Um, well, in the two-inch days in the BBC when, when I joined, editors were editors and engineers were engineers, although the editors had come from being engineers and you were assigned to a program um, which maybe, let's call it an electric edited program, which was the, the edit tech, which, which I was explaining with the, the, the edit point is defined, but the, the play-in tape could be was purely in the control of the engineer who went back his 10 seconds now as an engineer you would sit on the other side of the room and the editor would say i want you to come in there or there or just before that word or just after that word and you'd wind back your 10 seconds put your china graph mark on run it up and eventually you do all this and you're in awe of the editor because how does he do all this but eventually you would learn what he was doing by a sort of osmosis process, you would gather why, why was he asking me to tighten there? Why, why, why was that wrong? And you'd get this and then sometimes you would ask to swap over if it was a simple programme and some editors were uh, conducive to you swapping roles. So you would be on the other side, the editor was playing into you and if you had a problem obviously you could say, um, yeah I'm in trouble here or uh, having asked the producer of course if they minded if you did that and then we got on to a bit more confident, you would say to some editor, well, uh, look, you, you've got play school this afternoon. It's five, five programs to cut together. Um, would you mind if I did it? And the editor normally thought, no, that would be great. I can go and have a cup of tea. So I'd ask the producer, would you mind if I do it? And they would hopefully assume that you knew what you were doing. So you'd go in there and take on the stress and the pressure of putting a razor blade through five programs and hoping you know, that was going to go straight to the transmission suite in a couple of weeks' time. And that was a learning process there. Once we got onto single machine, singly manned edit suites, like using the 910 controller, then you were on your own. So the learning, the, the learning process for new people became more difficult because there was not that role where you were assisting an editor uh, in, in two inch days playing in and looking at, looking at the edits. Perhaps the assistant on the suites was just purely changing tapes, but actually learning being there right at the sharp end, learning, looking, watching, seeing what was going on, was a great than, training. Isn't it? It's more than that, because it's also client management. If you, I don't, depending on oh, yeah. who you're working with, but you're learning those skills of how yes. to deal with people's skills. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what the facility industry did as a facility owner was we used, every year we would employ runners, and runners were T-boys, really, and, and they had the opportunity. We would give them a year's contract if we came anything at all, and they would serve the edit suites through the day and with the opportunity to stay at night and work and in the departments. It. And then if they were any good, and you knew that very quickly, if they were any good, is you get them to do the loading overnight. So they began to use the machinery hands-on. So that was the introduction. And then out of that, you are very quickly know if you've got an edit potential guy or not. Personally, I had no training at all, except that I got myself ask, asking myself uh, as I started to become an editor and became an editor and started winning awards and people started saying you're a very good editor you must have been a film editor for instance why am I a good editor and of course I stood in the control room of a drama unit for 10 years 
with the very best directors in the country and without even knowing it had learned what a good and a bad cut was because they would look to me as a unit manager and say, yeah, that's all right, Phil. <laughs> and, and, you know, you became a contributor, mm. collaborator mm. with people like Jim Goddard, Tony Warmby, all those people at the time who knew how to do it. So you were picking it up yet again. You're picking it up and it's, suddenly it's going in here. So, and so then the industry, the facility industry, develop ways of doing that and that was to make them do the menial tasks and see if they were any good at it and if they weren't you quickly fired them. And it was one, it, it, it was one problem when we, when we first moved over to tape and then particularly non-linear, film department, you had film editors and they had assistants and the assistants would be learning from the film yes, editor right, yeah. and so when we got to this situation particularly when we were Avid and Lightworks, initially we were allocating assistance, but basically, what was there for them to do? Nothing but to sit in the back of the room. And okay, do you want another coffee? Yeah, no, I'm fine, thank you very much indeed. And we very quickly realised that this couldn't carry on, we were going to have to change this. And of course, we also, the question was raised, how are people going to learn how to, how to operate this, the, 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 the equipment, but more importantly, how to edit? Mm -hmm. How do you know? Um, I'm not sure we really solved that problem, and uh, as you know, but it is an industry-wide problem, to, isn't it? I used to work on Big Brother, um, and it's actually where I met Amanda. Um, and one of the things with Big Brother is because of the, over the, the nature of it, there are lots of overnight shifts because of the fast turnaround of it, and I used to post-production supervise it at this one point. And we would have edit assistants who would be helping doing the digitising overnight or creating copies, but also when they were free they could help the editors and so for them it was a perfect learning time. They would have that overnight time when they could actually go off and cut sequences and many, many editors have come from that route. Um, so there are still ways, but it's really hard for young people now yeah. to get into it, you know, yeah. especially if you're working on documentary. There's no, there's no call for anyone to sit in the suite yeah. or to learn yeah. how to cut. Mm. No. I think um, freelance is even worse, which I was freelance. Yeah. Tape, you just had to get on with it. But because I was freelance, often I'd be going into a facility's house, like Todeo, mm. used to go in there quite a lot. Mm. And there was always someone there to ask. I did the AVID course at the National Film School, which I paid for myself. And then again at a facility's house, if you were stuck, hopefully there was a room where the boys were doing the machine room and what have you, you could go down there and say, I don't know how to do this. I'd have yeah. the reverse sometimes. <coughs> when I was a, a linear online editor, there'd be some editors I'd work with who'd purposely try and blind you with science because they were so nervous of their job, they didn't want to teach anyone else how to do it. And, you know, if you knew what you were doing, you're just like, mate, it's just this. It's, it's not as complicated as making it out. But some people would be the reverse and not help you. Mm. I think by the time I'd done um, college and then worked with a corporate company editing on tape to tape, and when I left there, I worked with some really good directors, so that was fantastic but it was the, at least you know knew how to use the gear and basic editing and, and um and then was just allowed to work on doing more and more complex programs and then so by the time i uh, went to spitfire um and i was doing some freelancing at spitfire and they had a, an avid to beta test one of the first ones in the country um when i saw that i could really appreciate that um uh, you know that I'd be able to straight away edit, you know, non-linear in a non-linear way uh, on this computer, and I just completely fell in love with it. Um, but the reason I mention it is because I learnt from the manual, I had to get <laughs> literally get the manual out and like just go through it, you know. I think we've all had that exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was surprised. You know, it was quite a good yes, manual. Yeah, yes, uh. And then it was just suddenly like, okay, we've got a job coming, and it's like, oh, I had uh, to learn find on the job. Uh, facilities house. Well, I think the learning is a contributing guy. factor of all the things we've all said. And if you've worked with a good director and you do a good cut, he'll tell you. Is it, mm -hmm. We're learning two things. There's learning yeah. the equipment, but there's exactly. also learning yeah. how to edit. Yeah. Yeah. Learning yeah. How to edit. Yeah. You entirely. can't teach editing. Mm. No. I think it's no. intuitive. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. I think other people have to tell you that you're good at it, not yourself, because yeah. yeah. you don't know.